What's up, Foot Clan? It's mailbag time. We're going to be talking about some of your questions, some dynasty questions, some food-related questions. Of course, don't miss a minute. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you're nasty, I'm your host, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Wright, joined by two great friends of mine. Oh. Thank you for putting me on the same level as the one and only Jay Grizz. Well, I said I had two great friends. I didn't say I have one best friend. The, the, one of the great friends could have been Brooks. Oh, that's true. I it's just, not. Yeah, I mean, of course. Best friend of today's show, Jason Moore. What's up, Jay? What's going on? I'm excited to get to all of the user uh, questions. User? Is that what we're calling? Is that what we're? Yeah, that's with? that's what they call them. Hey, users! <laughs> would you like to user our fantasy football metrics and tools? Users of this podcast, the Foot Clan, <laughs> the one and the only Foot Clan. Which, uh, let me just throw this out: we are more often. Just uh, repeatedly reminded how awesome the Foot Clan are. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, uh, last week, Andy had uh, dinner with David Johnson, posts a, uh, a tweet and an Instagram post out there. And you always worry. You know, David Johnson had a down year. And you're like, oh, man, are the trolls going to come out and comment on this? Like, oh, we were in fantasy. <laughs> you know, but everybody was <laughs> awesome. Every, the Foot Clan, I'm just saying... Uh, you good listening people. by de facto, you're a good person. Beautiful because people because you listen to this show. Today's show is all about the user questions. We're going to be hitting <laughs> that Foot Clan mailbag. Remember, you can check out this show in the visual forms on YouTube, YouTube.com/slash The Fantasy Footballers. If you like what you see and you want to see some more, maybe you follow that Instagram, Instagram.com/slash Fantasy Footballers. You can follow me. Over on IG at FF Hitman. Jason is at Jason FFL. Jay, the quick question of the day post combine, because mm. we're no longer pre combine, we are post. Who is your current 101 in a dynasty rookie draft? It's going on right now. It's the same guy who was the 101 in the 90s. It's Jonathan Taylor Thomas. <laughs> JTT. JTT was, was number one on your board? He was number one on everybody's board. On, JTT. Uh, what, like Teen Bop? Right. <laughs> Teen Bop. No, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, Thomas. Jo yes, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Jonathan Taylor, to me, after the combine proved, you know, look, his, his production in college, if you're not familiar, out of Wisconsin, he was a back-to-back 2,000-yard -back rusher. And really, we he call was, it the deuce deuce. I think he was like 33 yards in his rookie year away from uh, a 2,000 yard season, something like that. So he's just a dominant beast. But you wonder, OK, you know, he's not in the, you know, it may, maybe it's competition. Maybe, maybe it's just, you know, volume. But then he goes to the combine and just dominates. And at the combine, he looked like a tier to himself. OK. And not everybody was there. Um, but, you know, DeAndre Swift, a lot of people's one on one. Um, did not, you know, obviously didn't measure as well. And we don't overdo the combine here. We don't uh, think, well, a guy has uh, 0.05 seconds faster on the 40. He is a better football player. That's dumb. But he just really impressed me. And, and you know, sometimes when you watch a group of these guys together, you just see who the alpha is, who's the leader. I remember, you know, obviously when, when it was Saquon's year coming in, everybody knew, oh, this is Saquon. But he took charge of the group of running backs. That's how it felt this time. It was like Jonathan Taylor and everybody else. Now, landing spot could very easily change that for me because we, we were talking beforehand, right? Right. And my worry with Jonathan Taylor from a fantasy football perspective is because he wasn't utilized as a as you know a a, a pass catching running back. Fully, you know, he, his 20, last season, he twenty six receptions good. in his final year, uh, over a ten percent target share. Pretty good numbers. But he's such a strong runner, a power game. that I worry, you know, the, the team that drafts him, are they going to be wanting to be one of these Tennessee Titans-type teams 
that wants to ground and pound, slow the game down. You know, I want look. I like my fantasy players on high flying, uh, t- you know, quick snapping. Throw the ball to the running back in you ball know. throwing, quick snapping. Yeah, I you know so that that's the one concern, right? Is, is a high power, high flying offense going to say that's the type of running back they want? I think they should because he's super talented. What about you? It's Jonathan Taylor for me. I, it it is Wisconsin, so I wanted to ask you about the Wisconsin curse. Of, you know the wink, wink, like the Madden curse of running backs coming out of Wisconsin now. Melvin Gordon has had a pretty successful career, and I wanted to bring that comp up of same school. I'm not saying they're the same player by any stretch, but Melvin Gordon wasn't considered a pass-catching running back. He had 19 receptions in his final year before getting drafted high in the first round, but his landing spot turned him into a pass-catcher. And what we have we have both watched of Jonathan Taylor on film is he can catch the ball. He's, he's a smooth pass-catcher. It's not a struggle. For him, so if he lands somewhere where they're actually going to throw him the ball, Jonathan Taylor could be just an absolute dynamite for fantasy football. Yeah, I mean, I I really genuinely believe he has the a a absolutely fine skill set to be a receiving back. Like comparing him to Leonard Fournette, when Leonard Fournette came out a couple years ago, some people were out there saying he can catch the ball, he's fine. And I back then said, okay, he has the ability, but it, like he's not. He's not elite at that skill. And you look at this past year. I mean, he caught the ball a ton. He was right. up there, you know, with, uh, the, you know, the, the there were what, like three running backs with more targets or receptions than, than him. So, but you didn't get that fantasy value because he's not that fluid, second nature receiving back. I do think Jonathan Taylor could be that. Now, I see in our doc, I assume Brooks put this in here for people playing in two quarterback or super flex leagues yes sir what would the would would that change the answer of who you would draft at the 101 in a rookie draft maybe i mean it, it might still be jt not for me not for me it's not a maybe it is uh probably not gonna take uh i presume joe burrow with the first yeah, burrow or, or Tua. sure i i would not take them with the first four or five picks even in a super wow flex. I, I there are uh, there are several studs at the top of this draft, both at running back and wide receivers, that I think are going to be great. And at quarterback, you go, okay, Burrow's a good-looking prospect. Very going handsome. To the, going to the Bengals, you know, it's like, okay, is that the best? Tua, oh, man, fantasy, he can run with well, the hip. Dolphins. That, I'm not going to take those guys over these okay. the, the, what you studs. consider the sure thing. Yeah, exactly. Do you know off the top of your head, or maybe you have the list of your number two and number three running backs? My number two and number three would be Swift and Dobbins. Okay. In that order? Uh, up, up, still, still fluid? TBD. Still, still fluid okay. right now. Right, right now I'm sitting with J.K. Dobbins as my number two guy. And DeAndre Swift will be number three for me. But landing place, like we talk about so much, landing place, draft capital, that factors into things <laughs> – that factors into things uh, far more than something like the Combine. Oh, for sure. I mean, we've had years in the past where a guy I loved is just taken off my board, just completely yeah, removed. Or I'm talking by... to you, Alex Barnes. <laughs> exactly. Alex Barnes. What pre, happened? Pre-NFL draft looked great. Rodney Anderson. Oh, man. <laughs> loved that guy. Well, the, we... you st- look, he's still going to be. Hall of Fame first ballot, but we know what happened to Rodney Harrison. We did, we're not he, sure what happened to Barnes. He crumbled. Uh, not much news going on unless you want to talk about the Tom Brady Bill Belichick phone call, which allegedly this is was big news. This is was big, contentious. Big news. But here's here's the problem with that. I don't think contentious. Well, I've seen like it didn't go well or it wasn't productive, and I think that gets blown into like they hate each other. But what I was going to bring up is. Bill Belichick speaking on a phone. Now, everyone has a different phone voice. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if you realize this, but your phone voice compared to your normal talking voice is very different. You are just a really subdued, sound like you are in full-on mega chill mode. Oh, really? Yes. I'm just like, what's up, man? Yeah. Hey, interesting. I I thought I would go the opposite. I thought I would be like really like serious on the phone. No. You you, you reach this... Point that you sound like you're just in a lazy boy. Having I a, having usually a talk. am when I answer <laughs> my phone. 
just you have your mobile phone on you and then your mobile lazy boy. Well, so I if mean, you're in the middle of something, you just plop it down. It's either a lazy boy or a bathtub. Which, by the way, I have been <laughs> almost every night a bathtub. Oh, uh, a bath taker, a bath man. I'm a bath man now. Are you Epsom salting? Oh, the, you the amount of Epsom salt in my bath is illegal in some states. I'm glad we live in Arizona where they don't have rules uh, <laughs> against the... Le- I mean, it's it's pretty much I pour a cup of water into the salt and then I sit on top of it. That's what I do. Oh, is for- that bad for your pipes? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. Uh, Al Borland, resident handyman. Do you know if this is bad for his pipes? Uh, it's got to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sounds bad. All right. right, we'll take that as the gospel. Let's get into the mailbag. 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 Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. I we were in, like a choir. Hopped in with you. See, I, I feel like I could be a backup singer. I can, okay. You know, but if you put me front and center. So you're like, like an Amari Cooper of singing. Ooh. Like nice, a good nice strong shot. number two. Nice shot. Shot across the bow there. Someday Amari Cooper's going to hear these things, and I'm going to get a whooping. Yeah, yeah. He, he was a lay over his lap. It is what you get, man. Or just a really strong talking to. It's one of the two. Well, I'll, I'll, I'd prefer that one. This one's off of Instagram. Remember Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers from Biggest Joe three one three. Now, are you the Biggest Joe or are you the three hundred thirteenth Biggest Joe? What if that's like. You know, that's his LBs. This is uh, the biggest Joe. Okay. He's weighing in at 313. Offensive lineman, biggest Joe. So can you explain more about the franchise and keeper lottery in your home league? You briefly mentioned it, and I'm so intrigued. Yeah, this is a great time of year to talk about something like this because it's a lot of fun to convert your – if you've had a league that's got the same group of men and women together for a, for several years – it's really nice to convert that into a keeper league. Not not all the way to dynasty necessarily, but it gives you something to talk about or do in the off season. So we did that a long, long time ago in our league of record. And what we decided to do, there's a million different ways you could set up a keeper. Ours is a little unique. You basically get three players. Okay, You get to keep three players, and it doesn't cost you where they drafted them. It's just, which three players do you want? But here's the catch. You can only guarantee one of them. That's your franchise. So you pick whatever, you know, if you've got Saquon or Christian McCaffrey on your team, you're almost certainly going to franchise that player. You're not going to lose them. They're yours. Then you don't get to pick two more. You get to pick three more. They cannot be the same position as the first. So if I franchise Christian McCaffrey and I've also got Joe Mixon, well, too bad. I can't throw him in my pool. I have to pick three other players. Could be anybody outside of the same position. And then we have a fun event. Oh, man, it's the best. It is so fun. We do it different ways every year, uh, you know, whether it's just uh, the ping pong balls in a ping pong ball hopper or colors, you know, on a fridge or whatever it is, where you, you randomly, you've got your three players in your pool and we draw two of them that you get to keep and the third one goes back in. And what this does is it means that even though you're keeping – three players per team that are the best in the league, out of the league, the draft still matters because all of a sudden you chose to make someone, you know, you you wanted to take your chance at getting a lot of good running backs and, oh, no, Zeke is back in the draft even though it's a three-keeper league. Every year our first round is, you know, stock full of – Right. Stock chock full? Stock. Stock full of – that can't be right. It's got to be chock full. It, uh, I think it's both. Like, I mean, I get where chock full is coming from, but you also stock up on things. So, sure, my stock is full. Okay, I feel like if I googled that, they'd say, "Did you mean chock full?" <laughs> but um, let's find out. You keep going. A, a lot of a lot of talent is in the beginning uh, of our drafts. It's really really fun, and that extra lottery moment adds one more day into the off season where the league comes together, talks trash, has fun remembers that, oh, yeah, I've got this team I can make transactions with. It's a really, really fun event Yeah, that we look forward to every year where you are – and you pick – you get to pick. So, like, whoever the host is of the video gives you, like, red, yellow, green, and you pick the two colors. So you control your own destiny, 
and we all just watch and root for everyone else to lose their great players. Oh, every time. You just it's want so this, much fun. You want their sadness. That's what's yes. best about this event is, man, it's so fun when they lose their guy. Although, on the flip side, when you lose your main oh, guy, oh, that sucks. Yeah. Not, not, not fun so much there. Off of Twitter, from at KPC the 12, a.k.a. Twitty McTwitface. <laughs> Do you think Juju will be undervalued or overvalued this coming draft season? Underwhelmed on the field, but also could be getting Big Ben back. Which narrative will rule the day? I think in a normal redraft league, he will more than likely be appropriately valued. Most guys near the top are at this point, this day and age. I think that I think that pe maybe I'm giving people too much credit, but I think the fears of this last season and what you saw will be weighed in. Now, I will say this. In a dynasty league, he is way overvalued right now. Is he? I think so. I've seen people as high as having him number two, like overall, or, you know, he's certainly in the in the top, you know, ten. And that's scary He was to me. easily moving up. Like, last off season, that was kind of a, a fun debate to have. The You had kind of the old guard, like Odo Beckham, DeAndre Hopkins. They had been the number one guy for several years and then all of a sudden Juju did what he did and was way younger than them so he skyrocketed towards the top so you have that uh, that's where I was going to move the question to is last year you I mean it's almost it's really it's a pass to me oh yeah for sure he did he had a what felt like a third string and eighth string quarterback he had a, he had a fourth string quarterback playing for like it, he could not get it done you put other superstars on that team, and I bet you they're not getting it done. Look at Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham had pretty bad quarterback play for most of the year from Baker Mayfield. Didn't really get it done. Jarvis was fine. He was fine, fine-ish. I, but I'm not saying that Baker was as bad as what was going on in Pittsburgh. Just saying the quarterback play matters to it, these wide receivers. It absolutely matters, but what you did see – is that because the quarterback play matters so much for Juju, and he wasn't able to succeed without a competent backup there, which currently they still don't have, how long does Big Ben continue playing? Does he come back this year and regain form? And if he does, is that the last year, the second to last year, long term for him? There, There's a worry there. Um, and so I think you've got this combination where, okay, he comes back, and you didn't even know as the number one with Big Ben, what he would do. We were projecting that. Right. One of your bold predictions last year, which I heard it from a few places, so not not just you, Juju's going to be the number one guy. Yeah, I was I was bullish. So after seeing what happened this year, that has completely knocked you off of that horse? So it hasn't knocked me off the talent that I believe Juju has. Uh, I think he is as talented as, as possible, but now there is – like three extra layers of risk involved because you're a year later into Big Ben's career. Now Big Ben has an elbow injury. Now you know through evidence that their backups can't get the job done. So basically, if everything goes right, I, I think Juju has that ceiling. If Big Ben comes back and is awesome and he's throwing for 5,000 yards and Juju's his number one guy, he could be the number one wide receiver. But there are there's so much more risk that wasn't there last year a year later, to an injured starter with known terrible backups. This one's off of YouTube from Andrew Nelson. Cooper Cup or DJ Chark? Now, this it's not classified if this is Dynasty or Redraft. So just answer the question <laughs> however you want. Sure. Um, I, you know what? No, I want to frame it Dynasty. Oh, okay. Cooper Cup or DJ Chark? I, guess I, I saw this before we started the show, and I started to think about it. Because Cooper Cup, obviously the one who's had the incredible production. DJ Chark did have a, a breakout of a year. Looks like he's he'll, he'll probably have Gardner Minshew mm -hmm. as his quarterback. But it and Cooper Cup completely fell off the map uh, yeah. towards the end of the year. How do you feel about these two guys? Was that a blip for Cooper Cup? Was the breakout a mirage for DJ Chark. I mean, there is there are so many variables floating around here for for both these guys that there could be not just a clear winner, but there could be a clear loser as well yeah, out of these two guys. I don't I don't believe either of those two things you mentioned are are true. I don't think it was uh, you know uh, uh, a a mirage breakout for DJ Chark. I think DJ Chark is legit. 
He has the physical tools. He showed it on the field, dealt with injury, dealt with quarterbacks going back and forth. I think he is for real. I also think Cooper Cup is phenomenal. He's one of my favorite dynasty targets right now. If I had to pick between these two guys, I would pick Cooper Cup because Cooper Cup has done it more sustained, I believe. He is clearly on an offense that while we were super disappointed, right? You wanted the Rams of the previous two seasons, not the Rams of well, the current Well, I just wanted the year. Cooper Cup of the beginning of the season to kind of go through the whole thing. Absolutely, but I think we still have to be realistic that Sean McVay and this Rams with Goff, with the older Gurley, their offense is significantly better than the Jaguars offense. So I'm going to take, and I know there's like a three-year age gap here, but Cooper Cup's 26 years old. He's also uh, now going to be a full year removed from his ACL injury. So I, I am, I'm in on the Cooper Cup side, but this is a, a fascinating debate because if you believe in DJ Chark, you could argue they're both great and you'll take the younger guy. Um, he, you know, he's the clear one on his team. Whereas with Cooper Cup, you say, well, he was for a minute. But then it was Robert Woods. You know, they, they, they share the ball better. So where are you on the Cooper Cup versus? I, I think I lean DJ Chark. I like the, like, when it comes what to just. What a dummy. <laughs> oh, thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. I would what pick a, Chark. Also. You'd go, oh, what Brooksy, an Brooksy idiot. chiming in. Oh, yeah. I, Owl? <laughs> Chark. Yeah. Mm. This is a Chark show. Mm-hmm. Pro I'm, Chark. We'll find I'm biased because he's on my team. Oh, there it is. There it comes. Look, Chark is, is the more talented wide receiver. Cooper Cup is – I'm not trying to take away from him, but he is, a, he is a benefactor of a great offensive scheme that is putting him in a good position a lot of the time. Oh, no. That no, sounds no. terrible No, for I him. know. I, I, and that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm not taking that away from him. But DJ Chark, 6'4", about 200 pounds, he's fast. Had the breakout year with uh, last year with Gardner, a thousand and eight, like, and that was that. Is that the ceiling? I guess. Let me ask you that. Is that the ceiling? No. For DJ Chark, or does he go up from there? No, I I, I think that uh, he, I don't think it's a guarantee he goes up from there, but I don't think that's his ceiling at all. I mean, you you've got a talented player who uh, can definitely go past a, a thousand and eight. Um, that being said, you know if if you're talking about great season from him and a super disappointing season um well it wasn't a super disappointing season it was a really disappointing second half right for and, cup and so you know that's kind of my point is that what what was cooper cup uh wide receiver four i believe on the year he finished at four he was one of only two wide receivers with double digit touchdowns and so yeah he had that disappointing stretch but cooper cup is great and he's still only 26 so go trade for cooper cup because clearly everybody out there does not believe in him and by everybody four? out there, I'm talking about Mike, Brooks, and Owl. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's pause for a moment and thank today's sponsor, Zoom. Jason, when you use Zoom, every day is a little better. A mm. little bit better. I like better days. Then you should use Zoom. Zoom Video Communications with the web's best-reviewed video conference service is used by millions to meet one-on-one -on -one or hundreds at a time. Zoom video conferencing lets you connect face-to-face -face with anyone across town, around the world, using flawless video, crystal clear audio, instant sharing of files, video, documents, spreadsheets, anything. You can share those files and collaborate in real time. I have done many a guest podcast on the Zoom platform, mm -hmm. and I have enjoyed myself. I have enjoyed looking at beautiful people. Oh, I was doing it with, with you? I don't even remember that. <laughs> but that makes sense. It, but if, look, if you were on the Zoom, you would probably look even better <laughs> <laughs> if I could look at you through a screen and not in real life. Mm. <laughs> look, if you're not using Zoom video communications, the only question is, why not? You can And you can use it anywhere, your office, your car, the airport, any place you have a connection. Visit Zoom online and get set up or and set up a free account today. Try the most affordable and most reliable video communication solution on the market. Meet happy. With Zoom. And Foot Clan, you know what to do here. Go to Omaha Steaks. Oh! And get Omaha Steaks. <laughs> because they're so stinking good. And right now, look, as we're, we're getting to that time. It's almost grilling season. And Omaha Steaks is preparing the Foot Clan with a great 
Ultimate Grillers package. It's $186 that they're giving you for $59.99 with the code FOOTBALLERS. You're going to get four free burgers, four free franks. And those franks, those dogs, yeah, those are good. They are delightful. They're so good. They're, they're, like, this isn't like grocery store garbage. Uh, look, Whoa, shots fired. I, shots fired for real. Order now and you'll get two butcher's cut filet mignons. They're twice trimmed to remove all the exterior fat. You get two top sirloins, four premium pork chops, four steak burgers, four gourmet jumbo franks, four potatoes au gratin, four caramel apple tartlets, the Omaha Steak seasoning package, plus four more burgers, four more franks for free. That's eight of each. All this for fifty nine bucks. Don't wait. If fifty nine ninety nine, the offer ends soon. So go to omahasteaks.com and you type footballers in the search bar, not a coupon code in the search bar. Type footballers to get the order of the best steaks of your life. You will not be disappointed. Omaha Steaks. Fill that freezer with some meat. Get grilling off the website. Wait. Oh, the question is about Allen Robinson. <laughs> but it. You it's thought for, it was coming in from Allen. I Robinson. was well. I was very happy. He wants to know what we think about him. I think he's great, and I have said many times on the show how great he is and how sad I am for his career. The man through through college, through the professionals, get the man a quarterback. It's ridiculous. Well, what's the question? Uh, so Randall in Dallas, Texas, would you take Allen Robinson in the third round as your wide receiver one if you went RB, RB? Nope. Uh, I think, Okay. yeah, I, I mean, look, I, I, I think Allen Robinson is phenomenally talented, but he has a lot of ways that it can go wrong, starting with the quarterback. I mean, you can make the argument he had a poor version of Mitchell Trubisky this year. The offensive line was struggling. They lost tight ends and blockers and, and he still finished as, as a wide receiver one. So, you know, what more do you want? And if he finishes as a wide receiver one, you're getting him in third round. It's good. I understand that argument. And I do believe he is talented enough to repeat. But there are so many ways it could go wrong, starting, of course, with Mitchell Trubisky. The target share numbers that he had when all of those other receiving options were down, um, and it basically just became a two-man receiving core. Uh, that obviously could go away, and you uh, you have to bring up he's got an injury history. And if you look at his career, you know, okay, he broke out with that awesome, you know, wide receiver six finish in 2015, and then spent the next three years of his career pretty much disappointing you until this. Well, season. one of them he would tore his ACL yeah. on the first reception, well, and that's not good. <laughs> I'm not blaming. <laughs> I know him. it's not. Well, it sounded like you were. It sounded like you were disappointed in him that he tore his ACL. Oh, I was a little bit. I'm not <laughs> blaming him, but I am disappointed. <laughs> I'm looking at some best ball ADP. These are wide receivers going ahead of Allen Robinson. Let me ask you if you would rather have them okay. as your one. We just talked about him. Cooper Cup. Yes. A.J. Brown. The, the hotness of last year. Uh, yes. I think he'll – That was reluctant. It was reluctant because there's risk there too. I think everybody's all hot and bothered because how awesome he looked towards the end of the season. Right now we don't know who his quarterback is. We don't know if Derrick Henry's back. So there, there's hesitation right now to answer that one. Amari Cooper. I will take Amari Cooper. I know it brings you sadness to hear that, but I would definitely – I Look, if you want to take a running back running back and then Amari Cooper as your wide receiver one, I am fine with that. I do believe that – there was more to him being injured the, the second half when he sucked. The, you know, in the first half when he dominated, I I uh, I believe that narrative to be not a narrative. But You believe truth. that happened five years in a row? No, but the, his only full season as a Cowboy where we watched that happen, I believe it happened. Fair enough. All right, last one for that because he's going right before Allen Robinson. Cortland Sutton from the Denver Broncos. No, I, I'm not – if you're that early in the draft, you have to take – um, I, I love taking risk later in the draft, but I don't want to project that forward um, in the third round with my first wide receiver. This one's from Twitter. It's from Greg. Just finished my first season in a dynasty league. Currently, waivers are off, but trading is allowed. Plan is to turn them on after the league's rookie draft. Is this how you would recommend? 
Uh, in our leagues, we have everything open. The, um, once, once the well, the the waivers are always open. They they are open, but they are we run on a, a fab system, so they're not. It's not just first priority. It's there's a free agent uh, auction budget every single day. So the the waivers run once a day, and then they're locked again until ten o'clock the next day. So it's not just news comes news out. breaks, and it's whoever's sitting at a computer gets to go grab the player. Right. I mean that, and that's how it is all season, all off season. But we don't lock waivers down where no transactions can be made. If if you know someone out there, you get a good camp report, and you want to go out and see if he's there. You know. Uh, Matthew Barry just wrote a, a great article post combine of some of his takeaways. It's a great article every year. Um, he brought up Bryce Love that, the, you know, the, the Washington is they believe in him still. And he's, he could be on waivers in dynasty leagues. Sure. I like being able to see off season news and take action. That's why you play in a dynasty. Like, so I'm, I'm much more in favor of having, the waivers available to run in a dynasty league because that's the whole reason I play in a dynasty I league is for off season action. Completely agree from now scratch that itch. <laughs> what? Whoa! That's what dynasty is. You got to scratch that itch. You got. It sounded like you were trying to scratch it with your voice. It was in my throat. <laughs> Facebook, Aaron Proudfoot. <laughs> okay. I yeah. I know he's proud of his feet. Well, one of them. Oh, that's true. He's not proud feet. Nope. Proud foot. He's just that left man. He's got that left foot. It's so much bigger than the right <laughs> foot. He's so proud of it. <laughs> Love this foot. Look how big it is. I wear a size 14 and an 11. I got to get two <laughs> pairs of shoes. Oh, that'd be expensive. Um, and his question, uh, pizza rolls or pizza bagel bites? Mm. I'm going to go bagel bites. For sure, not close. Really? Don't hear what I'm not saying. They're both delicious. But you you said not close. Not close because one of them can scald my mouth unexpectedly. Those pizza pockets, they retain heat. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Sometimes you, you get that squirt of pizza sauce in your mouth <laughs> that will just take your jaw off. I don't want to eat lava. So what you're saying is you want pizza in the morning, pizza... In the evening, pizza at supper time? Yes, I am 100% fine with that. I just don't want Pizza's it to on a bagel. destroy. I, I just don't want to murder my mouth. See, I'm I'm a little bit more of a risk taker. I like the pizza rolls more. Now, I, I know what I'm getting into. Here, here's what I will say in your defense. That they're bitter. If, <laughs> that they're, well, they're way better, not close. No, in your defense, if the t if it's temperature controlled, if you, if these are like, you hit the right time. They set out for the right amount of time. So you, you have to, you Once have to cook they're, them they're, in the oven. You can't nuke them. Who nukes them? If, you, if you're people, listening and you have taken these things and put them in the either one. People do this. Don't do that. Don't. <laughs> this is upsetting. Don't put, don't put things that are supposed to be in the oven in the microwave and have soggy, nasty, garbage treats. These are treats. Treat yourself with an oven. But when they have cooled to the right temperature- uh -huh. The rolls, like, so peak bagel bites, peak rolls, the rolls are superior. Heck, okay. So we're, we're both there. Yeah. You just, you, you don't like to take on the risk. I've had too many injuries. <laughs> I've, I've, too many times. It was a pizza-related injury. Fool me, fool me once situation. <laughs> From YouTube, this is Joe Wallach. What is Devontae Parker's value going forward? Is he a one-year wonder, or, or will he be a consistent wide receiver two in my lineup next year? He'll be a consistent wide receiver two in your lineup next year. Ooh. Uh, I think that that is fair to say, at least for the first half of next year, because I think we're all confident at this point that there is not a week one rookie starter. That's what it appears for Miami. for Miami, which means Fitzmagic should be there as the week one. That's how I'm answering the question. And if he is, the level up was real because you watched the games. You saw separation. You saw contested catches. You saw great routes. You saw the physical talent that we all saw coming out of college realized. And so you're. I like the, I like the way this person has asked the question. They're not saying, is he going to be a wide receiver one and going to be a dominant force for the, from the Dolphins? He's just saying, is he going to be a re reliable wide receiver too? I think that's a great bar for him. Yeah, I think it's fair. I would I would put him right around there. 
If uh, off of Instagram, D Marrow twenty seven, what is the best sports moment you've watched live? Oh, that's easy. I mean, there's if you said what's the second best sports moment I've watched live, that's a hard. That's you a don't hard, know. I don't know. But I was, and you were. I and was there Andy too. was. We were. Yeah. I don't believe any of us were nope. together. We just happened to be at the same game. And we this, didn't even know each other yet, <laughs> but we were. It was it was a five situa- w- situation. We were under the same moon. Uh, and 2000 was eight, right? Yeah. The NFC Championship game, the Kurt Warner led Cardinals against the Philadelphia Eagles to go to the Super Bowl. Spoiler: We won. We went to the Super Bowl. We, we went. Yeah, that's where it ends. Uh, the story yeah, is done know. there. But <clears throat> the game, the game itself was incredible. You had everything. We got out to a huge lead. The crowd is awesome. We're mocking the Eagles fans right around us. Just like, in your face, we destroyed you. They come back yeah. and take the lead. Freaking Deshaun Jackson. And we're like, oh, no, we're going <laughs> to lose. But then we came back and we won. Confetti raining yeah. down. It's literally the highest game that you can go to at home for an NFL franchise. We won the best home game that you can win and we were a part of that it was awesome and i i'm curious for you how how this felt because when i my experience of the game i have never experienced noise like that Mm -hmm. i'm talking about the crowd noise the our stadium can be loud sometimes but i've i my chest like it was difficult to breathe because it was so loud in this room, and that sounds ridiculous. No, like, I, I know it was, I was affected by the sound. I couldn't breathe, but legitimately, I it was harder to breathe with everyone being so freaking loud there. Yeah, I mean, you have asthma. I so do. Thanks. That's the no, <laughs> uh, no. I do know what you're saying. It was, it was, it, but that that made it incredible. I yes. mean, it was just you were every every sense on your body was experiencing greatness, including taste, because I had so much food there. Instagram. <laughs> so it was a, a real. How could you eat at a time like that? Holi- well, I wasn't like on the final drive putting down a hot dog. I'm just saying on the day. I'm sure I had several. Instagram from B22 Ball 2. There's a lot of unique names coming in. Deontay Johnson or Christian Kirk next year? Um, I do love the outlook for Deontay Johnson, both but I'm not going. Deontay Johnson from Pittsburgh, Christian Kirk from Arizona, both. Well, I, I guess I won't say it's fair to say that both are projected to be the wide receiver twos. Deontay Johnson theoretically should be the number two behind Juju Smith-Schuster. Christian Kirk. Kirk is the one. Could profile as the one. He is the one. Kirk, I mean, especially another year older for Larry. What if they take CeeDee Lamb or Jerry Judy at number eight in the draft? That would change things. But right now, okay. the, he's not on the roster. And to me, I would much rather have Christian Kirk. The pace of play, everything you saw from the Cardinals this year from a rookie uh, quarterback projects for enormous fantasy value going forward. Um, this past year, I know Christian Kirk was a my guy for Andy because of some of those systems. I was against, I was opposed to it on the full basis that rookie quarterbacks don't throw enough touchdowns and usually not enough yardage to really support that. But in that second year, that goes away. And so I think it does. I mean, you, you saw the percentage of drives that got to the red zone versus the percentage of red zone touchdowns they were one of the craziest, uh, you know, gaps in the league, and that is something that's going to change with a year under the belt for Kyler Murray. And I, I think you, you could talk about, you know, adding three or four touchdowns to Christian Kirk outside of the yardage. Um, and Kirk showed flashes of being a true. Yeah, that beast. game against Tampa Bay, which a lot of teams did that to the Tampa Bay secondary, but Christian Kirk absolutely went off. Kind of a. Uh, at least a that? glimpse like of what could happen. Hundred and something and three, three touchdowns. Yeah. yeah, he he was awesome, and, and uh, Kyler was excellent as well. The next question is from Facebook Julian Ferreira. Who's a better buy in dynasty? T. Y. Hilton, Brandon Cooks, A. J. Green. Oh man, that is that is nasty. That's a nasty question. There's, who is the best buy of these three cells in dynasty? T.Y. Hilton, Brandon Cooks, or A.J. Green? 
Uh, I would go T.Y. Hilton. Yeah? Uh, He dealt with injury this year, so his value is low. He has the chance to have a quarterback upgrade, maybe. Maybe. I mean, you know. Possibly. uh, Could be a downgrade. Could be a downgrade. They could get Phillip Rivers. Uh, Oh. Boom. Shot again. Uh, Yeah, but, I mean, look, I'm not – you, I think you can make the argument. So T.Y. Hilton will turn 31 in November. And yeah. I think A.J. Green's 31. Is, I believe they're the same age. You could make the argument that Brandon Cooks is should be the answer here. I, I, I would find it hard for A.J. Green at 31 years old with a rookie quarterback coming in, having played, you know, whatever it is, nine games in the last two seasons. I am obviously on this show. I've been very anti AJ Green for the last whatever fourteen, fifteen months. So I couldn't see myself. Perhaps it was that like of the last thirty-two games he's played, well, I think ten of them. Yeah, that's yeah. And I think the, you can extend that back even another year. I'm going to go do some it's, math. It's been a while since he's had a full healthy season, which is kind of crazy because he had a stretch where he was the longest thousand yard receiver in the league in consecutive seasons. Uh, he was doing that cause he, you know, he'd be playing 16 games. Um, but I, in a dynasty league do not want to buy AJ green. I sold him this uh, last year's off season and I was very happy about that. So if you want Brandon cooks more than T Y Hilton, I'm fine with that. He's younger. He's still talented, but I'd go T.Y. What, where would you go on those three? <sighs> Next question. <laughs> I I guess it would be Cooks. I mean, I can't believe that T.Y. Hilton is that old. That's That just feels wrong. A.J. Green feels old. Yes. T.Y. Hilton feels like a vet. Yeah, he feels like you should be 29, maybe 28. You know, for me, part of that is that I feel like there's there's just a history of the big wide receivers. Say t- 2012 was his rookie year. I feel like there are so many big wide receivers who hit a wall and are done. And that's not to say that they can't hit that wall late. Brandon Marshall played, you know, to a to an a, you know an old age. But you've got uh, when Brandon Marshall hit the wall though, it's that done. Was, it's that done. was a brick wall. When Andre Johnson, unbelievable oh, yeah. wide receiver, when he hit the wall, just done. And um. You know, so I I think I'm kind of maybe biased against the older big guys. Maybe there's something to that. Julio Jones. Well, Julio hasn't shown signs of hitting that wall yet, but when he hits the wall, I'll say he's done. But All I, right. you know, I I traded AJ Green plus uh, I don't remember for Julio last off season. They're about the same age, but AJ Green had shown signs of hitting that wall with injury. Um, and Julio just looks unbelievable still. Instagram, Steve Aru. The most important question nobody is asking. Oh, where, this sound, I can't wait. Where is that cookie from? And this is in regards to <laughs> the, the social video that you put out asking for mailbag questions uh, where you were eating a giant cookie. It's part of my diet plan to eat. You're bulk, are you bulking yeah, bef- I'm, before I'm, the cut? Exactly. exactly. I'm going just bulk, putting on mass. I'm going on Mac. I'm putting on mass, <laughs> and I'm I'm gonna bulk up, and then man, when I cut, I'm gonna be shredded someday. When, when I'm thinking, I'm thinking about considering sh- getting shredded. Kind of like how you thought about considering running, and then did I run? You did, r- did no, just w- yes or no question. Did I run? Did you run? Did I run once? Once, yes. After th- after thinking about considering, you did. So does that mean if I think about considering getting shredded, maybe I'll get shredded once? Once is all you need. That's all I need. I just need a photograph to show, (laughs) you know, my grandchildren, like, this was me. You know? Yeah. So, anyway, back to the cook. Back to your weight game plan. The cookie. Uh, what the name of the place? I don't know. Sweeties or Sweetums? Something like that. Sweets. Sweeties. 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 So Sweeties. They were a present from Brian Ketron, the uh, the biggest loser. loser. Uh, Now... It, a birthday it, present for you. Yeah, they were. There was. It was a birthday present for me, and I said thank you. And then I called him the Katrona virus. <laughs> it, it was. It destroyed your all of our digestive yes. systems. I mean, this thing was like eating. Just take. Why didn't we just like sprinkle a bunch of sugar and pour some chocolate syrup on butter, and then eat that stick of butter? It 
was delicious. It was so good. <laughs> it was so good. But it, it immediately made me feel worse than – like, I'm used to eating bad things and then feeling bad because mm -hmm. habits. But that took it to a new level. Yeah. And I can't wait for my next one. <laughs> YouTube from Jose Lozano. Jason, which would you like? Oh, it's even addressed to you. Oh, okay. I'll answer it. The 101 and carry on Johnson. The 101 and carry on? Yeah. Or Zeke. Um That's interesting. I I, I would definitely go the 101 and carry on Johnson. I think right now if you're looking at uh, uh Jonathan uh, What if I just said carry on Johnson or Zeke? <laughs> it would without a doubt be Zeke. Okay. Um I know that I believe in the talent of carry on, but you can't trust his health anymore. Uh, I expect Detroit to add another running back, and he's not got the contract or the situation, the history. I mean, th that's not close. My love for Carrion Johnson doesn't force me to give bad advice to people. Um, but if you're adding the 101, which could be a Zeke-level talent at a younger age, I mean, look, Zeke is awesome. I would love to have him in a dynasty league, but I promise you he will fall off quicker than you think because he is a running back, and it happens to... Everyone out there not named Adrian Peterson, Frank Gore, Marshawn Lynch. Did you hear Frank Gore is going to keep playing? I heard he's going to keep working out because <laughs> he wants to play. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to keep working out. Look, if the Bills won't have him back, I can't fathom a team taking on a 37-year-old running back. I, is he 37? Yeah, he is a... He's a grandfather. Uh, I mean, he's... Wait, well, hold on. I'm 37. Are you a grandfather? No. I don't think so. No. I'm 37. Are you a grandfather? No. Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> so, but we both could be grandpas but, uh, if we don't... <laughs> high school days were a little <laughs> reckless. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Take so, it easy. <laughs> uh, yeah. It is funny, though, to think, like... See, I'm a young man. Like, I'm just, I'm not even. You just called us grandfathers. I am not. Well, but that's because I'm not a running back. I'm not an NFL oh. player. So my 37 is fine. Frank Gore's 37 is like, you know, full. I can't believe he doesn't have full gray head of hair, gray beard, uh, you know, all sorts of, you know. Uh, ailments. Ailments left and right. Bad hip. Probably some deep vein thrombosis. Oh, for sure. Don't don't go in the aircraft. <laughs> All right, we'll get out of here on this last question. Twitter from at helphole eight eight zero two zero five four nine. Okay, that's that. What, the names have been fantastic today. Congratulations, Foot Clan. Well, that's or users. That's the that's the handle though. the The name they go by D Money. Of course, but an M U N N Y. D Money. D Money. In a dynasty format, when should we move on from running backs? I'm desperately trying to move Zeke right now. Is that the right move? No, I don't think that's the right move. I think Zeke isn't at that point yet. Um, you know, it's different for everybody, right? Zeke is older than Leonard Fournette, who I'm trying to move. Um, Zeke it, will be 25 in July. Yeah, I mean, it, it. you have to look at a couple things with running backs. Um, the contract situation matters a ton. Zeke, because he's a cowboy, because he's you know uh, the center of the franchise, and they paid so much to get him, and they picked him so high, and they've had success with him. He's going to probably get another contract after this big contract, and you know he hasn't shown signs of slowing down. And the team is behind him and loves him. Those are things that are going to keep him playing. You know, Leonard Fournette on the other end you've got them voiding his guaranteed contract, saying they're not sure if they're going to pick up uh, this year or if he's part of the plans. And then all of a sudden what happens is it's really free agency that ruins a running back's life. Um, you know, once they hit the market and all of a sudden they realize, oh, gosh, people don't want me as much as I thought they would want me. You know, they, they're replacing me with these rookies who are 20 years old and cost them nothing – as opposed to paying me big money, so now I can't find a team. So the contract situation is what I would look at and try to project it forward to say, do I think he's going to get another one, or does he currently have a, you know, three more years on his contract, um, and use that as a barometer for selling the 
the running backs before they hit their cliff. I feel like I'd be willing to sell Zeke in about two years. Yeah, like, sure. I, I think I can. I think that I can guarantee myself two more years of top tier production. He may have a. He may have many more after that, but with the running back, when it comes to trading them in dynasty, I would prefer to be out in front and be a year or two early on selling them because I'm. I can still sell at peak value. Yeah. It, like I mean, we we talked about David Johnson at the beginning of the show. I mean, he was he would have been at peak value until he wasn't. The, so the, it's the Bef value before this last off season. Uh, before all the knee stuff started coming out, right after the uh, the Super Bowl, is when Andy sold Todd Gurley for a haul, right, a haul of hauls. And so, yeah, if if you do get ahead of it, you're going to get so much back from the stars. So it's not. I'm not saying like I wouldn't sell Zeke, but if you are selling him now, because I I think you've got a really really highly guaranteed two years of great value. So if you're selling him now, you better be getting that haul of hauls. And Zeke didn't have that number one season this past year like Gurley had so that you could, you know, do you think you're really going to get his peak value? Yes, yeah, so you, right you can still trade Zeke for peak value. Okay. Uh, Brooks, you have Zeke. I got Fournette. I'll trade him straight up. Oh, excellent offer. Offer on the air. No, thank you. Mm. I, thought I, I thought I was going to get him there. Pressure him into it? Yeah, I'll ask, I'll ask you again tomorrow. You'll... I'll we want to thank you. Pristine Auction. Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site on the internet. Yesterday, a Saints two-pack. Ooh, a two-pack. What? An Alvin Kamara signed jersey. Super Camario went for 67 bucks, And a Jared Kuk. Jared Kuk? Jared Kuk. What was, uh, what was our friend's name from the other day? Oh, something 24. Jay DePew. Jay DePew. Jay, Jay DePew, De 24. <laughs> Jay DePew and Jared Cook. That's it. actually their cousins. They are cousins. Jay Jared DePew, 24, is Jared Cook's cousin. <laughs> so stupid. But, it, but someone bought a Jared Cook jersey signed. Do you know who it was? Jay, Jay DePew, De 24. <laughs> Look, Pristine Auction is amazing. But if they got it for 36 bucks, That's ridiculous. 36 Foot Clan or users, please go to Pristine <laughs> Auction. When you sign up, make sure you use the code BALLERS. It'll give you 10 bucks for free towards one of these auctions. So instead of getting it for 36 or 56 you're getting it for 26 or $46. Pff, quick math. You won't be disappointed because for yourself or for others, the stuff over there is just unbelievable. It's fantastic. Thank you for joining us for today's episode. We shall see you next week when we have fabulous things to talk about. We're going to be talking some coaching changes. Oh, most important episodes. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.